Well, hello, God bless you. This is part 3B. I have been sharing with um, the saints and those who are willing to listen how I prevent going back into a place of depression and anxiety. This is like the third time I've tried to do this <laughs> lesson. I believe there's something amazing in it for you. Amen. So I want you to pay attention. We're going to be talking about the mind, but we're going to bridge over into what's in the mind, which are those thoughts. Thoughts play a vital role in the concept of depression and anxiety. And then we're going to go on in part four to talk about emotions. But right here, we're going to talk about thoughts, amen, and how and what we need to do with them. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you. Father, this is like my third attempt <laughs> to teach this lesson. So, Father, I ask you to be with me. I bind every distraction. I come against you in the name of Jesus, Satan. You are a liar and a thief. You will not prevent this lesson from going forward. God, I thank you for the nuggets that are in this lesson. Oh, God, penetrate the truth of God's word in the hearts of your people today. Lord, we just give you praise and honor for what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, be glorified, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so here we go, you know, and if I don't make it this time, I'll be back for a fourth time because I have a determination. You are going to get what God wants you to get. Amen. Hallelujah. You get that feistiness as you learn how to come out of the claws of the enemy because you begin to know who you are. You begin to know, oh no, you insubordinate spirit, you will not keep me, deter me. You may delay, but you will not deny me from doing what I'm supposed to do. That's going to be a no. <laughs> yes, in the name of Jesus. So we're going today, we're going to be talking, we're going to be talking about the mind, but we're going to bridge over to what's in the mind, which are our thoughts. Amen. And I believe that just like the mind is invisible, it's not tangible. So are our thoughts. Our thoughts are invisible. We cannot actually go and pick up a thought and say, here it is. You know what I'm saying? It is intangible. Amen. And thoughts are silent words. They are communication. They're words, but they don't have a sound, right? They're silent words that are collected in the mind. Amen. So spiritually speaking, thoughts come from one of three sources. They either come from us, they either come from God or the devil. So when we get a thought, that's the checklist, is this something that God would be saying to me? Is this something that I am saying? Is this something that the enemy is saying? And then I need to go to work as I begin to examine my thoughts. Amen. Which is going to be very important. Because thoughts are land in our mind. And we have to use our will. Our ability to choose. To determine if we will accept that thought or not. But it happens in a split second. And a lot of times what has happened to us is that we're kind of, um, we're kind of delayed in that area, or we have had thoughts that were implanted when we were children during vulnerable times that we have accepted, we absorb them. You know, when you're a child, you don't have the mental capacity to determine, is this an advantageous thought or not, right? You just absorb it. And so when the enemy dropped thoughts in our mind, especially during times of um, vulnerability, um, times of trauma, you know what I mean? It was very easily absorbed by us. Amen. And it helped to create what we call the belief system, which is the infrastructure of the stories I tell myself the self-talk that I have. Amen. And so if the enemy is able to drop thoughts in our mind and we receive them at a young age and they, they are deeply embedded in there, they affect everything going forward. They affect our attitude. They just, they affect our perceptions. They, um, um, affect our, um, our decision-making, our language, our relationships, they profoundly affect us. And so some of us have had such infected thoughts. Thoughts 
that were demonically inspired to destroy us. Who are you? So incredible that the devil would try to do that while you a baby. Yeah, you were incredible. But he did that for a purpose because he wanted to cripple you. He wanted to keep us from being able to live the life that God wanted us to live. So when we come to Christ, that part of us has not changed. I need you to hear that. So if you had crippled thoughts about yourself before you were saved, simply because you accepted Jesus Christ doesn't mean that you're not going to have crippled thoughts um, crippled thoughts anymore because salvation doesn't take place in the mind or the body. It takes place in the spirit, our spirit. Amen. So that is why we have to renew our mind. That is why we have to allow God through the washing of the water of the word of God to renew the spirit of our mind, to get all the way deeply down there and to deal with that. But the good thing of it is, is God's word is spirit and it's life. Amen. And it has the ability to travel deep within us and to, to demolish lies as we repetitively listen to it. Faith, what we believe, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to understand that if we receive those things, we became, we have a deficit because God told us specifically that we are to set our thoughts or our mind on things above, not on things on this earth. We are to deliberately place our mind on things that have to do with godly thoughts, things that are going to bring pleasure to God and also a place of satisfaction to us. That area, our mind, was created by God. And God is an intentional God. He has a purpose for everything. Our emotions were created by God. Amen. Our spirit was created by God. And there are certain things that we should do in order for it to remain healthy spiritually. Amen. And so one of those things is we have to be careful about its atmosphere. So the word in Colossians again tells us, set your mind on things above not on earthly things. Then it says, why? Because you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. That means that now I'm no longer in charge of deciding what I'm going to think because now Jesus Christ is Lord. He's owner, ruler, and master of my life. So I don't get to just think what I want to think anymore. I have to now put on the mind of Christ And it's going to be very important. That particular um, commandment of of thinking in a certain way, we're going to see there's a commandment in a a minute. Um, It's to help us to be elevated to the place where God wants us to be in our thinking and everything else about our lives. God wants us to be in this world, but not of this world, to be different, different in the way we think different in what we do, different in how we um, perceive matters. Amen. So he wants it to set it above. God tells us the category of the kind of thoughts that will help us to keep our mind in a healthy place and our mind set apart for him. Yeah. And how do I know that God wants my mind set apart from him is because the scripture tells me to love the Lord, my God, with all of my mind. In fact, that's a part of the very first and the greatest commandment, the greatest. It has the priority. God's like, look, let me tell you what you got to (laughs) do. I want you to love me with everything about you, including your mind. Amen. That was a commandment, not a suggestion. Ah, so when we allow our mind to be used in a different way, we, it, we are mismanaging it. We're allowed, allowing it to be used in a manner that's outside of the will of God. Amen. But it doesn't automatically get like that because prior to our coming to God, we will let our mind run free. We will let it have anything in it and everything in it. So now we come to Christ. You're not going to automatically go from one to a hundred of, of allowing only the thoughts of God to remain in our mind. There's a process. Amen. 
It takes time. Transformation takes time. To be metamorphosized takes time. And it's okay. Amen. But we should be putting forth the effort to reach that goal. And our life will begin to reflect that we're doing that because of our perception. We're able to see things in a different light, to respond to things in a different light. Amen. So it goes on to say here, God wants us to dedicate our mind to knowing him, to knowing him. He wants our connection to be on him. The word of the Lord said that I will keep you in perfect peace. Why? If your mind has stayed on me, if it's stayed, if it's set on me, if you're thinking about how much you love me and how much I love you and how much I want you to have a satisfying life, even here on earth, how much I, you know, you're thinking about the goodness of God, how he's allowed beautiful things to happen that you can breathe, that you can see, that you can walk, that you can talk. The things that are simple to other people, you want to dedicate your mind. You want to be thinking about God. That, my friend, is going to take a process. Thinking clearly and truly about him. That's what God wants. And so that we don't have false ideas in our mind. Ah, a lot of us have false ideas in our mind. And we're going to talk about that. Amen. So he categorizes the types of thoughts that we need to choose in order to remain at peace in our mind. What are those thoughts? Philippians 4, 8 through 9. He said, whatsoever is true, is it true? According to this word. Is it true? Amen. He is asking, he wants us, hold on to that. Is it honorable? Think about that. Is it right? Think about that. Is it pure? Think about that. Is it lovely? Think about that. Is it admirable? Think about that. Is it excellent? Think about that. Is it praiseworthy? He says, think on these things. He actually has it in the word of God. That's what I want you to use your mind for because I gave it to you and I know how to keep it in its optimum health. Is it you need to think about things in this category? It goes on to say, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. That's how we begin to make this transition is that we practice. We practice because we say, wait a minute, this is not on the, on the, on the list. I'm not going to meditate on that. It's not valid in God's eyes. Amen. It's a false idea. And it's so important that we deal with our thoughts because whatsoever a man thinketh in his heart, what we think on the inside of us, what we have a conviction about, so is he. Amen? It's going to affect my feelings, my attitude, my self-worth, my behavior, however I'm thinking. So that battlefield... And a lot of people use it. Our battlefield is in our mind. It starts with a thought. The emotions that it evoke, they start with a thought. The attitude, the behavior, it starts with a thought. And guess who knows that? In addition to God, the devil knows that. So he knows if I can just captivate you with something that seems to be true that I can stimulate a matching emotion and draw you into sadness. God is not, he is not trying to draw us into sadness. So whatever we're thinking, if it's drawing us into sadness, we got to know that that's not God. Amen. And that's the struggle for us when we are depressed, because most of the time what has happened is the enemy has dropped that negative thought. Right. We have accepted it. Right. Because, again, it is a lie, but it's encapsulated in truth. Amen. So it may say your mom didn't treat you right. And so you're nothing like those two go together. Right. And so if we accept that thought, we accept that thought, 
then we, of course, are going to trail into a place of gloom. Then we may say that somebody attacked you. So that means that you're not worth anything. You're a mistake. You see how he took that someone attacked you, which may be the cause, I mean, may be the truth, but then he tacked on a lie. And when we receive it, then we're able to, th we think that the um, emotions that are stimulated with it go along with it. And we're drawn into a place of gloom, a place of fear. Um, how about if this happens to me? Nobody's going to help me. Something might happen, but God's always there to help you. You see, but the enemy will take those two thoughts and trail us into or take us and lead us into anxiety. Amen. And so he offers that feeling. How about if this happens or that happens or what if or what if? And then he offers a feeling at the same time. And if we accept that, then we've opened ourselves up to the spirit of fear. Amen. Or the spirit of gloom along with the whole gang that comes along with it. So what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to maintain that? First of all, we got to understand a lot of times, as I was saying, there's a stronghold. Right. So we have received it and now it has gained like a fortress around us. A gloomy fortress. There's a thought. A gloomy fortress is around it. It's hard to penetrate. So maybe we might start saying the word of God, but it doesn't seem like it's penetrating. The It's not getting to the thought. I remember when it felt like the thought that I would have, to me, it felt like it was ice around it. It was nothing that could penetrate it. Even when I would try to go to look at the word of God, listen to the word of God, it just wasn't penetrating it because it was a fortress, a fortress. It was a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. A place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. And some of us, when we, by the time we realize that we are depressed or we are filled with anxiety, there's a fortress. There's a thought. Just can't, I can't. Get it out of my head. Have you ever said that? I just can't get that out of my head. I tried. I listened to the word of God, but I can't get that out of my head. Amen. And so that is when we need a deeper level of the word of God. The word of God is equipped to destroy that fortress. The truth of God is equipped. It is empowered. It's dunamis. So we may need a larger dose of the word of God. You see, for a time period in your life, you may not just be able to have just a little listen to one lesson one time and keep moving. You may have to listen to that lesson 10 times a day because of the, the strength of the fortress. But I'm here to tell you that one day you're going to experience the liberation that will come from the power of the word of God. But what happens is as you begin to do it and you're doing it in this process of listening, the devil's going to tell you, ain't nothing happening. You, better, you need to try something else because we didn't have immediate gratification. But what we need to realize, it was years, years, years of that fortress being strengthened. So let's look at a scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 7. It says, it is true, we live in a body of flesh, but we do not fight like people of the world. So we use something different. Why? Because we are connected to the spirit. The spirit has its weapons. The world or the natural has its weapons. Just like the world has the weapons, they may have a knife or a gun or Uzi or whatever it is they may have, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a machete, whatever it is, the world has its weapons, but the spirit realm has its weapons. And so you're dealing, dealing with a spirit being. And so you have to respond by using spiritual weapons. Oh yeah. That's why the devil didn't want y'all to get this word. Amen. So just your complaining about the fact that that's 
thought is there is not going to change it. Just one application of the word of God is not going to just change it. You may not feel any kind of any kind of reprieve at all, but you have to continue. Faith comes by hearing, 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 hearing the word of God. It is a chip, 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 chipping away. So it says, it is true we live in a body of flesh, but we do not fight like people of the world. We do not use those things to fight that the world uses. We use the things God gives us to fight with, and they have power. God's word has power. Praise and worship has power. God is in praise and worship, authentic praise and worship, anointed praise and worship. Of course, you need to use wisdom in reference to what you're listening to. There is good and bad of everything. There are imposters who will try to promote praise and worship who are really not people who have been ordained by God to do so. Same thing with preaching the word of God. There are people who are imposters. Amen. The scripture tells us that there can be a wolf that has on sheep's clothing. But you'll know them by their fruit, their character. You should know me by my character. Am I living out this thing? Am I operating in the spirit of love when I'm talking to you and dealing with you? Can you feel the fact that someone honestly cares about you and their concern? Am I in this just to get your money? Come on, somebody. <laughs> yes, God can bless me. And, 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 it, and the scripture tells us that a, a, a labor is worthy of their hire, just like in any other career. Amen. But is that what my focus is? Because if that's what my focus is and not to help you, you don't need to listen to me. You hear me? (laughs) If my focus is to control you, if my focus is to make gain from you, to try to uh, pull you along, you shouldn't listen to me. That's why you need to be having a conversation with God about everybody that you sit down and listen to. And you can discern if God is bouncing off and through them or if he isn't. Sometimes, even if their gift is working, their character is off. But you got to discern. You need to be having a conversation with God when you sit down to listen to anything that I have to say. And anything that may not be for you in this season, then you don't you don't receive and whatever you do need and you know it's coming from God, then that's what you receive. Amen. God will not have us to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. God has called us to be wise. God lives on the inside of us. Amen. So it says here, listen, those things God gives, gives to fight with destroy the strong places of the enemy. That fortress, the strongholds. So God gives us things that will destroy that fortress, that that ice around that 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 thought. Right? I just can't get it out of my head. I'm always thinking about it. You, it's a stronghold. All right. But God gives you what you need in order to penetrate and destroy that stronghold. Amen. We break down every thought. I love it. We break it down. Wait, hey. Wait a minute. You got to go through the examining table when you land on my mind. And if you're not of God, and if you you got to go, if you're of me and it's, still, and it's messed up and it's against what the word of God says, I got to straighten you out. But we don't do that automatically. It happens so quickly. I remember when I told God, I don't know sometimes when the devil's speaking or when I'm receiving um, something from the enemy, you know, so I need for you to slow down. I I remember I told, ask him, I need you to slow down me and help me to to, to know that. And I'm going to tell you that story as we close, when we begin to close. Well, let's finish the scripture. We break down every thought and proud thing that puts itself against the wisdom of God. If it's something, I don't care how real it is, if it doesn't go with the character and the word of God, then we have to say no. It might be real. It may feel so strong, but it can still be wrong. Hey, it can be strong but wrong, right? 
So it said, we take hold. We, not God. Y'all see this again? We, God has empowered us. I know y'all don't want to do no work, <laughs> especially if you're depressed or filled with anxiety. You don't want to do nothing. Just get me out of this. But that is the reason why many of us are there. Because we didn't take care of what was coming in our mind. What was happening with our emotions. And so now it's double work. But guess what? It's okay. Because that's only for a season. It was only for a season that I had to do that. I was so depressed I could not lift my head from the pillow. I was so full of tormenting anxiety. I couldn't even be alone with myself, with my thoughts. I was afraid of my thoughts. I did not, I stopped bathing and and stopped changing undergarments. I just, I gave up on life. I tried to kill myself several times. All of those things that I did because of what was coming here first and then what was, which was enhanced by emotions. I didn't, and guess what? I didn't want to be near the word of God. I wonder where that thought was coming from and that feeling was coming from. I don't want to hear it. It was irritating me. That was in me. Because he wanted me to stay in bondage. But I can cast down imagination. You a lie. You're a false belief. You're a false idea. What is not true according to the word of God. I have to humble myself. Yeah, I've been thinking about this and believing this ever since and whatever, but that doesn't mean that it's true. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, I'm just um, stating that scripture in the King James Version, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's my responsibility. Cash you down, fling, hurl, dash, launch. No, you're not going to be in my mind like that. How do I do that? I do that by releasing the word of God, just like Jesus did in the wilderness. The devil said something to him and he said, it is written. He said something that matched what the enemy said in the counter, that countered what the enemy said, according to the word of God. So you got to begin to find things that counter the, the lies, the things that you believe that you know is not God. And then if you're not sure, then you need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to think about what you're thinking about and ask God to raise up someone to help you to go back and to really slow down and look at what you were thinking, even when you were a kid and you begin to see that, you know what, that, that wasn't, that's not possible. Well, that wasn't true. So now I got to take the time and invest the time in now creating a different atmosphere. It takes time. Amen. And you have to employ the Holy Spirit who is the helper help, and to ask him, Holy Spirit, help me to think about what I'm thinking about. Holy Spirit, help me to know when the enemy is dropping a thought in my mind. Help me. Nudge me. And then we have to do our part by replacing it. We have to deal with the thought, the complete thought. A targeted response. So we're not just going to pick us any scripture out of the Bible and say it to, to, to that thought because the enemy is speaking to us. We're going to speak back to him. No, we're going to fill ourselves with a targeted thought. Amen. Or targeted word. So if, if I'm saying your mom, my mom wasn't any good and um, I'm nothing. That's two parts that, that that thought is. My mom wasn't any good and so I'm nothing. So when I respond to that thought, I might use a scripture that, um, though my mother and father, um, um, uh, when my mother and father, um, uh, um, um, let me down, then the Lord will tell, take me up. Amen. Let's find that scripture. And then I may say, and, it, and the other part of that was I'm nothing. Then I can say, no, I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Um, a peculiar people to show forth the praises of him that brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. So I'm dealing with it, giving it a targeted response. And I need to ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Though my mother and father forsake me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Though my mother and father forsake me. See how he brought that back to my remembrance? Because I was getting ready to look it up. When my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. 
And I'm a, I'm a chosen generation. See, now that I'm, I'm completely responding to that thought with a counter according to the word of God. Amen. So you have to slow down and take inventory. As we begin to close today, I want you to know this is what happened with me. So as I was in the cause of depression and anxiety, I said, God, because he began to show me it's your choice to receive the thoughts and the feelings, Benita. I said, wow, are you serious? He said, the enemy, he had someone to tell me the enemy can throw anything to you. He can lay any, anything can land in your mind, but you have a choice as if you will receive it or not. And so I said to God, please help me. And he did. One day, he let me see that that thought, he nudged me and let me see that thought is not of you, me, and it's not you. And I spoke back to it using the word of God to the thought and the emotion. And they left me. I had to cast it down. And you can do it too. Keep listening to the videos if God is touching your heart to do so. Because we're going to now begin to bridge into emotions. God bless you.